Now it is definitely difficult for Harper to make every single collector happy when they decide what models to make, but a region that is chronically underserved is the Oceania region, apart from Qantas that is heavily featured. Another airline that gets some featuring once in a while from that region is Air New Zealand and one of these models we'll take a look at today. And with that, hello and welcome to a new episode of Review, where we today will take a closer look at a Boeing 787-9 of Air New Zealand. At the front of the box, we have a cutout so we can get a glimpse of the aircraft model inside. And on top of the box, we have the Air New Zealand branding. The back side of the box then has a lovely image of the aircraft in real life. And we are provided with a web link by Hyperwings where we supposedly can get more information. However, this link does not work anymore. So that's all for the box. Let's look inside and at the aircraft model itself. And here she is, the Boeing 787-9 in the current standard livery of Air New Zealand. And full disclosure, I absolutely love this livery. But if the model is supposed to be more than just good, but even great, it needs to be carried by more than just an awesome livery. And, uh, well, we can find out if the model actually can do that by taking a closer look at it. So we'll start our tour around the aircraft model with a look at the tail section, where we have the vertical stabilizer have the iconic Air New Zealand branding. With the tip starting on the vertical stabilizer and then going down on the side of the fuselage, we have the beautiful New Zealand fern. And underneath that, we find the full registration code of the aircraft. Towards the very tail of the aircraft, we then also find a bit of detailing around the APU exhaust from where we can move on to the front of the aircraft where we across the fuselage then have the writing of Air New Zealand. We do also find a Star Alliance logo of which the airline is a full member but unfortunately we don't really find any other detailing here apart from the most basics like the cabin doors and cabin windows. And sticking to the basics is pretty much also the story around the cockpit section where we find the cockpit windows with the window wipers. Above that we have the emergency hatch for the cockpit printed on and then we also find the circular marking around the ray dome. A nice little addition but still a few small static ports or patter tubes would have really elevated the aircraft model around this area. But let's move on to the engine nacelles. Now they have been kept in all white, just as most of the fuselage, but we do have the silver leading edge printed on, but no safety markings here whatsoever. The physical detailing is therefore much more convincing in my opinion, where I think Harper does a pretty lovely job with, for example, the Chevron nozzles, also here from the front. They're very, very nice, you can see the engine fan blades. Then we should also take a quick look at the wings, starting off with the top side, where we have the different flap slats and spoilers carved out very nicely, but then no other printed detailing here. What a shame. The underside of the wings has more lovely physical detailing, but here we also find at least one printed detail with the full registration code of the aircraft once again. Now a quick look at the landing gear reveals that this is of course the standard landing gear that Harper uses for all their Dreamliners, but that's not a bad thing because I actually think it looks pretty decent. Even the front landing gear has a little bit of printer detailing. No, not here on the side, but if we look underneath the nose, we can see Harper has put a little bit of effort into this. Another place where Harper has put quite some effort into it is with the Ram Air intakes, which always look pretty decent, or if not lovely, on the Dreamliner models from Harper Wings. One thing I, however, do not like is the addition of a hole in a fuselage for a stand, which is simply not included with this aircraft model, making it rather pointless. It maybe infringes a little bit here on the livery, but it doesn't really destroy any printed details, so at least that. And then last but not least, we do also have uh, the doors to the cargo compartments printed on here at the back of the aircraft, and also here at the front of the aircraft. So there we have it, the Boeing 787-9 in the current standard livery of Air New Zealand from Harper Wings in scale 1 to 500. And what can we say about this aircraft model? Well, the model for me doesn't really excel. I mean, it is heavily carried by the livery and unfortunately the model itself or the efforts Harper has put into it just, I mean, it doesn't really add much. And that's a big shame because it's just, you know, a question of a few small red or black markings here and there, and the whole model could have just been on a whole different level. But Halper, when they made this model back in 2015, failed to do so, which is a shame. 
Still, we have a model with a really brilliant livery, and if you like the New Zealand livery, then I would still say that it is worth having in one's collection, because at least the mold and the physical detailing of the aircraft model is actually very, very good. So with that, we have reached the end of today's episode. If you have enjoyed this video, then feel free to leave a like, and of course, if you are new around here, you're always welcome to hit subscribe. With that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching, hope to see you soon again. I'm checking out, and bye.